Hi, in this video I'm going to go through this little toy app that I've created to achieve this idea which I had for a while of being able to mount essentially a Bookstack instance as a Fuse file system on Linux. So the intent is that you could browse the pages of your Bookstack instance or and the books and the chapters as if you were browsing through a normal file system with files and folders. So this took me a couple of attempts, but I finally just sat down and got this done and came up with a simple kind of little proof of concept. Now I will say before I jump into the demo is that this isn't really a production grade thing. It is built with my quite basic knowledge of Go with limited error handling and things like that. There could be scenarios where this might be helpful for others to use, or you might want to use this app just to play with your own instance if you use Linux as well. So jumping into a little example, I've got my File Explorer open here with a mount folder and I'm also in the same location in my terminal down here. And on the right is my development book stack instance. You'll probably see a lot of rubbish in here just of where I've been testing various things. But I'm going to mount this instance using the application that I built. So I'm going to do bsfs and then specify the folder to mount into. And by default, this is going to take the credentials, the API credentials for Bookstack from my environment because I've got some environment variables set up, but you can specify those on the command line too. So I'm going to run that and it mounts a file system. So if we go into this folder now, we can go into here and at the top level, we see all of our books. So the ordering is a slightly different, but for example, if we see accounts department here, we've got a accounts department there. So it's using like the slug base name for these, which you'd usually have in the URL. If we go into accounts department there and we'll go in via our file system. And then we've got this folder here, which represents our chapter and then the various pages within our book. And then each of our pages is currently shown as a TXT file because that's what it will be by default. So how this works is that it's communicating via the API and it's fetching back page content via the exports API endpoints. So here we're seeing it with TXT exports in the same way that you'd get if you use the export option within Bookstack itself when looking at a page and exporting. So if we open up, for example, this employee payroll, we see the text content for this page. But this can be used with the other export formats as well, at least the ones that are available via the API. So if I stop this, and then I rerun it by passing an option of format and then PDF, and then it's remounted it. I'm just gonna refresh this now. So we're back at the top level there. And if we go back into accounts department, I now see uh, PDF files. So one thing that you might notice is that the sizes are all the same, this 4.8 megabytes, and they're all incorrect. And that's kind of a side effect of how this is being done because to get the actual file sizes, it would be quite expensive. So these are essentially a uh, placeholder file size, but because my uh, file manager Dolphin here has gone through and created previews, it's essentially accessed those files by this point. So if I did refresh now, it would show the correct file sizes. And then if we were to jump into one of these, so this UK financial regulation here, open that up and there we go. Then it just opens up locally on my PDF reader. Again, this is essentially a PDF export over the API of this Bookstack page. So if I have a look at the same page within Bookstack itself, here it is. And of course this can do most things that a normal file system could do because that's how it's essentially seen by Linux in this case. So I could select a bunch of files and then copy them into a different folder that isn't on this kind of virtual file system. And they'd kind of copy in. Again, it's not super speedy because it is going via the APIs and it's using Bookstack's API endpoints for exporting, which can take a little while, uh, especially for a format like PDF. But here those are, now they're just normal files on my local file system. So yeah, again, just a neat idea that I've kind of written for fun as a proof of concept, but it could be useful for other people and other purposes. And of course, this is made fully open source on the Bookstack slash file system project on Codeberg. And I'll put a link to this in the description of this video. And this is written in Golang if you wanted to join in, edit or uh, fix some of the bugs, which are probably most likely going to be in there. Because while I've written quite a bit of Go in the past, it's not something I jump into frequently. But it's all made available if you want to take that away and build it into something else. And this also has full uh, requirements and usage instructions within here as well, showing um, each of the options that can be used. Oh, and a quick big thanks to the people that have built this Basil slash Fuse library because this does quite a lot of the heavy lifting under the hood and I've just kind of used this to then wire it up with the Bookstack API to achieve what I've just shown. Hopefully if you got this far, you might like to use this too and you might want to join in with the project on Codeberg. But other than that, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you have a wonderful day.